Hello everybody. Today I am going to be talking about um, how we can know that we can trust God when it comes to having children. So I've talked about this a little bit before, but today I'm going to be addressing a specific subject, which is do we need to have discernment and do we need to pray, oh God, is this the right time for me to have a child? and in the meantime, use birth control or natural family planning? Or is this something that we can just leave up to God entirely and let it happen as it will? So I'm Jessica Roldan, and this is my channel, Truth at Home. Welcome. I have been taking a little bit of a break from making videos because I've had some, you know, busyness happening, and um, this is the first chance I really got to be able to do this. Um, so I really look forward to talking about this subject with you all. And, and let me just start out by saying this. I have been posting articles and making videos, not a whole lot of videos, more blog articles than videos on this subject for several years. I've read several different books. Um, from Christian authors on the subject of trusting God in this area. And I've watched different videos, um, more books than videos though. And, and the most important thing is, I've been reading the Bible over these past, I don't know how many years, you know, more than 10 years. Um, regarding, I mean, I've been reading the Bible longer than that, but regarding this subject, I've been really paying a lot more close attention during these past 10 years or so, and just really, really paying close attention to any time in the Bible where God talks about conception, the purpose of marriage, pregnancy, childbirth, sex, any type of thing like that. And I just have been really paying, paying close attention to anything that talks about those things and the value of children. You know, how does God view children? And to me, it's been really, really mind opening. And I have come to believe and I think understand that a lot of Christians get their opinions about this subject from what they hear other people say. So they're not really forming their opinions based upon a really thorough research into what the Bible has to say about this topic, but instead they hear somebody's opinion and they're just like, oh, that's good enough for me and it makes sense to them. So they just go with that but they're not taking the time to do a thorough research. And I feel like the truth of the matter is being, um, it, it's kind of hidden away because people aren't really looking into it like they should be. So they think, and I, and I think kind of arrogantly, I think that they believe that they know the truth when they're really, they really don't. So what I want to do is I want to get to the truth that is in God's word. I don't want to just listen to somebody's opinion. I want to see what God's word has to say. And in this video, because I'm only going to be addressing one, one facet of the whole entire issue, of course, they don't have time to look at every single verse. Okay. Because there are literally, I think there must be more than a hundred verses that I have accumulated on this topic. And there's not going to be time for that today. Trust me, there are many verses and I have them all jotted down. But uh, today I'm just going to look at a few and I'm going to be answering this question. When it comes to having children, should we pray to God for discernment to ask him, God, is it your will for me to have children right now and wait for some kind of sign or use our human wisdom, which we think maybe God is guiding in some way or seek, you know, what we would call godly advice is that the way that we need to approach having children? Or can we trust God entirely and just leave it up to him, not use birth control or natural family planning at all, and just let it happen how it's going to happen and trust that as we do that, God is guiding the process. And there are some people who have said to me, well, that's just inaction. That's just being lazy and just saying, I'm just not going to, you know, try to figure out the answer. I'm just going to be lazy and be inactive and be irresponsible. And that's not my approach. And I believe that for a lot of couples, married Christian couples that are 
choosing not to use any form of birth control, including natural family planning, I don't really think that for them it's just being inactive. I think that they are actively putting their faith and trust in God. And that is different. They are actively praying, God, we want your will for our lives. And we put our trust in you. Please do what's best for us. And folks, that is active trust. And the way that they show God that they believe in him is by letting him have control. Because belief is nothing if it is not followed by action, right? Isn't that what all the Bible stories teach us? Faith without works is dead. If you say you believe, but you have no action to prove it, you're a liar and your belief means nothing because it's not really belief, right? So when we say we believe God and we trust him with our lives, we mean it. And we do the actions that show we trust him. However, if you say that you believe in God, but you're not letting him have control because you're taking that control upon yourself, believing that this is being responsible, in what way are you trusting God then? I know some people will say, well, we trust God to guide us as we make these decisions. And I understand that. But where are you getting your guidance from? I try to get my guidance from the word of God. I think that the word of God and what it clearly says is much, much superior to just listening to somebody's opinion. Because basically, if you don't base your life on the word of God, that's all you have somebody else's opinion, whether it's yours, your husband's, your friends, your families, your pastors, it's their opinions. And yes, when God's word is not clear about an issue, sometimes we have to seek godly advice. But God's word is clear on this issue. And that's why I always encourage to do your research. Okay, so I want us to look at a few verses this morning. First of all, I just want to I just want to remind you, you know, the story about Rachel and Leah and how they were in this kind of competition, you know, to have children with Jacob. Well, God was in control when you read that story and it actually covers several chapters. So I'm not going to read all of that today, but I think you may be familiar with it. And if you want to read the story, that's in Genesis and basically God opened their wombs and he closed their wombs. They didn't ask God for wisdom, should we have a baby now or not? They wanted to have a baby, but God decided, is it gonna happen or not? He was in charge. And the same thing with Abraham and Sarah. When God was ready for Isaac to be conceived, that's when he made it happen. They kind of uh, jumped the gun a little bit um, by having Hagar, you know, go in with Abraham and him have a child through her because they thought maybe that's the way to do it. You know, God's kind of taking a long time. Maybe human wisdom needs to come into play here, but their human wisdom was faulty. That was never God's plan. He always had the plan of opening Sarah's womb at the right time and causing her to conceive when he was ready for that to happen. And the Bible even says that he visited her. Um, So there's one example that I think you all are familiar with. Here's another one from the book of Ruth. It says, so Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. Now, we don't know. Did Ruth have problems before this? Because it doesn't mention her having any children before here. And she had been married before to uh, Naomi, one of Naomi's sons. And it doesn't say that they had any children. So there could have been some infertility happening there. I don't know. But here's the thing. The Bible isn't specific and it doesn't say. That's just conjecture. The only thing that we know for sure is that the Bible says the Lord gave her conception. So clearly God was moving and he was taking control over that area. Um, And then in the story of Hannah, who desperately wanted to have a child, she wasn't able. We know we know this story. Um, It says the Lord had shut up her womb. Right. So we know that there were some fertility problems here, 
but it says the Lord did it. The Lord had shut up her womb. That was why she couldn't have children. So again, we see God's control over this issue. And then later on, it says, Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Wherefore, it came to pass when the time was come about after Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, because I asked him of the Lord, is what she said. So God gave Hannah conception after she prayed for a son. He gave her conception at the time he had decided upon. And not only did he give her um, Samuel, he gave her other children as well. Later on, it says, and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And listen to that word again. The Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived. The Lord visited her. He made it happen so that she would conceive. In our culture, we have this idea. And I think it may be some kind of modern newish idea. I'm not so sure people always thought this way. We have this idea that the conception of people kind of happens by accident unless God, you know, miraculously kind of steps in and he has like some kind of super special plan for this person. In that case, he'll step in and he'll open the womb that was previously barren and he'll cause that couple to conceive. But all the rest of the children in the world is kind of, you know, kind of an accidental thing that just happens when you come together. And that's why we have to control it. We have to control the accidents from happening. Now, be honest with yourself. Isn't that the way we've been viewing children in our culture? We use birth control because we're trying to keep the accidents from happening. We don't really believe that conception comes from God. And I know that some people might point to, oh, well, you know, if, if there's a rape happening, did that conception come from God? Or what about unbelievers? Is he causing them to have children? And my answer is, yeah. I believe that God causes the conception of every single child. You may not agree with me on that, but that is my belief because I believe that that is what the Bible teaches. Every person is created by God. Every person has a spirit given to them by God. Every person has a purpose created by God. Whether you're a believer, whether your parents are believers, or whether your, your parents were non-believers, whether your child was conceived in rape or incest, or whether your child was conceived in a loving relationship, or maybe your child was conceived in a lab or art, you know, some kind of artificial insemination, it doesn't matter. Every child, though appearances may be deceiving and it may seem like an accident, every child was created on purpose by God. And the only way to be consistent with that pro-life belief, that pro-life message, is to refuse to use birth control. Because birth control is treating conception as if it's an accident that needs to be controlled. And that is not consistent with the belief that every single person comes from God. Some people will say, well, you know, we can, God gives us the responsibility to choose when we will conceive, but he, having foreknowledge and knowing that we will conceive, creates that person. And I can understand that kind of viewpoint, but I feel like, why not go all the way? Why not believe that it isn't even necessary to use birth control because we do trust that God is creating that child and conception comes from him. So why are we getting in the way of it? Why do we need to use human wisdom? Why can't we just trust in his divine wisdom? Okay, so um, let's move on to a verse in Psalm, Psalms, Psalm 71. I actually didn't tell you the references for those other passages because I thought, well, they're so easy to find. You can look in Genesis for the story of, you know, Abraham and Sarah and Rachel and Leah and Jacob. And you can look in Ruth to see the story of Ruth. And you can look in 1 Samuel to see the story of Hannah. Um, this one I'm going to give you the reference for. Psalm 71, verse 5, it says, For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels, meaning womb. My praise shall be continually of thee. So here David is saying, mm -hmm, here David is saying that God has been taking care of him from the womb. And God's the one that caused him to be born. 
when it was the right time. So uh, some people might say, well, we can trust God to take care of the baby and manage that process when the baby is already in the womb, but we need to control conception. Why? Why not be consistent and say, okay, if God is taking care of that baby in the womb and he's the one that's managing the birth and deciding if it's going to, you know, what time it's going to happen, then why not trust God for conception as well? Doesn't it make more sense? Isn't it more logical? Okay. So here's another one from Isaiah, Isaiah 44. And he's actually talking about um, the nation of Israel. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel whom I have chosen, thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb. Again, in verse 24, it says, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. And it continues to say some pretty wonderful, awesome things about God. Um, listen, God is saying to Israel, I made you. But the example that he uses is the example of him forming them from the womb. Basically to say, you know, I've been taking care of you ever since you began as a nation. But if you think about it, literally, literally, God did form Jacob from the womb because he was involved in that process of Jacob and Esau being conceived in their mother, Rebecca's womb. Remember how God told Rebecca, you have two nations within your womb. Um, Esau was going to be the father of one nation. And Jacob, later renamed Israel, was going to be the father of another nation. God caused Rebecca to conceive because her husband Isaac prayed for her. So literally speaking, God did create Jacob. He made him from the womb. He caused him to be conceived and he guided that whole process. And Jacob was um, the part of the beginning of the, the nation of Israel. Um, so it's kind of metaphorical in a sense, but it's actually literal too. Okay, so moving on to Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Uh, let's start with four. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, uh, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. So think about this. Even before I formed thee in the belly, in the womb, I knew thee, God says. God was in control of the entire process of conception, forming Jeremiah in the womb, causing him to be born. He was in control of this whole entire process. Right from the very beginning, God had ordained Jeremiah to be a prophet. Did his mother know that he was supposed to be a prophet? I don't know. Did his father know that he was supposed to be a prophet? I don't know. Maybe they thought he was an accident. You know, maybe they conceived this child and thought, oh, here comes another one. It's kind of bad timing for us. You know, um, maybe there's some, you know, problems happening with uh, some uh, of these nations, you know, that are wanting to come and conquer us. And it's not things aren't, you know, going well or whatever the situation was, you know, maybe there's, uh, you know, financial troubles or, you know, whatever it might have been. Just think about how things might have been for Jeremiah's parents and why they might have said to themselves, oh, this is not really a good time to have a child, but, you know, we're going to have a child. How could they have known? Unless God specifically told them, the child you're about to have, I have ordained a prophet to the nations. And isn't that true about each person? God does not usually tell the parents what his plans are for that child, you know? I mean, very, very rarely does God send an angel or some kind of special message to let the parents know, this is my plan for the child you've just conceived. This child is special. Okay? But that doesn't mean that if you have not received a message from the Lord or a, vid a visit from an angel, that your child is less special. No. No. 
every child is special and God has a plan for every child's life. Okay. So just because you did not get a visit from an angel or a special, special message doesn't mean that your child has any less of a purpose for their life than Jeremiah did or any of these other people that we've been talking about. Isaiah, um, we actually didn't talk about Isaiah. Isaiah was saying God had a plan for Jacob or Israel, in other words, the nation of Israel, and so on and so forth. You know, all the people we've talked about, God had a plan for their life, but he has a plan for my children too. He has a plan for your children too. He just hasn't told us, okay? But we can trust that he does have a plan and that it's a special plan. Maybe not to be a prophet, maybe for something else. And will that child grow up and, and be wayward? We don't know. Only God knows that one not not just one, more than one people have told me, well, why would you have children if they're just going to grow up to be wayward? That's kind of a silly question that's impossible to answer. You can't know what your children are going to grow up to be. Even children that are born in broken homes can come to Christ later on and become Christians and do amazing things for God. Even people who appear like they're going wayward and they're making the wrong choices can later on repent and come to God and live for him. And there's children who maybe have grown up in Christian homes who later on, they turned away from God. I mean, how do you, how can you know this? You can't. So I really don't think that's a good criteria to use. Oh, I, I can't have children. I don't want to have any more because they might, we can't give them everything we'd like to give them and all the opportunities and, you know, and life is going to be hard for them and they might grow up to be wayward. I think that that's not, that's, that's an impossible question to answer, and we shouldn't even worry about that. You know, if God is going to have, if God is going to cause you to conceive that child, God knows what's going to happen in that child's life later on. Leave it up to God. So you guys, I think we have a problem in our, our churches, in our Christian families, in our marriages, and within each of our individual hearts, that we refuse to trust God. And it's not just in this area, it's in other areas as well. But right now I'm talking specifically of this area. We refuse to trust in him and believe in him. And we make up all these good sounding excuses for, oh, why we don't have to. We have to have discernment. We have to be responsible, um, et cetera, et cetera. But we don't understand that this way of thinking is actually a modern and new kind of thinking that started with the movement for birth control which began way back in the day in the late 1800s. And Margaret Sanger was one of the, you know, the proponents of that among others. And this whole movement for birth control and later, which later on turned into a movement for abortion, it paved the way for it basically. Um, it, it, it all started with this idea of we have to be in control. We can't trust God to be in control. We have to control it. We can't believe that each of these children has a purpose. Each of these children may just be an accident and we have to control the accidents. And if a child happens to come into the world, well, okay, maybe that God has a plan for that child, but you know, otherwise we got to control the accidents. So this way of thinking is new and it hasn't been, I don't believe it's been the way that Christians have thought for, for the past thousand, two thousand years. I think it's a new way of thinking and it comes with, people stepping away from the Bible and saying, God, we don't need God. We can make this on our own. It's humanistic, you know. We can figure this out on our own. You know, who is God? I mean, who who even knows if he's a, he exists? You know, we've, we've gotten into this humanistic way of thinking in the past. In the past. Okay, you go ahead. Go over there. I'll close the door for you. Just cut that part out. Okay. In the past, um, you know, 150 years or so, you know, people have really gotten away from the Bible's teaching and become more secularized in their thinking, more humanistic in their thinking to where they kind of just leave God out of it. And they feel like, okay, we are the saviors of ourselves. We have to figure out our own problems. We have to come to the rescue because God's not going to. Um, so I think that has really come into play with why people think that they need to use birth control. But that is not the Christian and biblical way of thinking. The Christian and biblical way of thinking is no, God is the creator. He is in charge and we can trust him. And belief means nothing unless it is put into action. 
putting your belief into action means not using birth control, not even family planning and saying, God, you've got this. I trust in you. Whether things go well or things don't go well, I trust in you because you know what you're doing. All right, so that is my topic for today. In the future, I hope to address different facets of this issue and bring up some other verses, but um, that's it for now. Um, I think I'm going to just be filming these videos and not editing them a whole lot because I don't have a whole lot of time. Um, next time we'll see what facet of the issue I choose to address because there's many different objections that I have seen come up against, you know, trusting God in this area. And I'd love to address them little by little, one by one. Um, if you have any things that you would like to see me address, go ahead and leave that comment for me in the comment section. And I will see if I would like to address that in the future, in one of my future videos. So that's it for today. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.